sitwasyon so more than you expect the more that you sow many of God's promises in your heart the more that you're gonna reap and experience those promises of God and you can say truly God is a faithful God God is a powerful God God is a real God He is alive He is the same yesterday today and forever let us praise God in the life of our beloved pastor Pastor Walter Sabor glory to the name of Jesus praise God Jesus will you leave your hands to Jesus come on just fully open your heart so wide and make it ready to receive the pouring out of God's love God's revelation God's presence, His joy, and His peace. The Lord is ministering to everyone. And as the Lord ministering to every one of you, your very needs, your very concern, is being ministered by the Lord, dealed by the Lord. The Lord says this morning that every time the Lord reveal His presence, He is doing something new, something great. He is restoring, He is repairing, He is making your life beautiful. He is doing something unexplainable, good things. When the Lord is revealing His life, Revealing His glory, revealing His presence. And every time we praise Him and we worship Him, there is an overflowing glory because we are making heaven here on earth. The presence, where the presence of God is, is heaven. It's heaven. Kaya about isa naririto. Enjoy Him. Come on, just give Him thanks. Just a word, a whisper of words, thanking the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba Father. Let your sweet presence encapsulate everyone and touch everyone, Lord. Come on, receive it. Jesus. Come on, receive it. Let nothing be wasted. Oh God, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So sweet, so gentle is the precious touch of the Lord to every one of you today. Oh, but Father, thank you. Oh, but Father, thank you. Thank you for our promotion. Thank you for the supernatural favor. Thank you for the increase. Thank you for the promotion. Thank you for the good health. A healthy and a wealthy family. Your presence is present in this place to minister to you. Everyone is rejoicing. Come on, number of Jesus the Holy Spirit is present in this place he's doing something good so 
something great in your life. wonderful and most beautiful moment in our gathering when the Lord is ministering and that is the moment that the Lord is ministering to his people he is revolutionizing something in the inside of every believer listen every time you allow the Holy Spirit to pray to worship God he is 
making alive, revolutionizing every promises of God, every word of God that is deposited in your heart. Lahat ng bagay na nakadeposit ang pangako ng Diyos sa inyong mga puso, kapag sumasamba ang Espiritu Santo in the inside of you, <laughs> is doing something, I tell you. God is a living God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He is always ready and it is His pleasure. It is His delight to demonstrate His power unto you. The only question is, are you ready to receive and to manifest that power of God in your life? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I seal, Father God, healing to everyone received. I seal, Lord God, that promotion na natanggap Panginoon ng lahat na naririto at maging sa mga nakikinig online. I seal the promotion. The devil cannot destroy, the devil cannot steal that promotion. It will ever increasingly coming to you in the name of Jesus. I release it. I release it. I release it in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak and I declare, therefore, it will be released and it shall come to pass in your life. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Receive your perfect healing. Kuya Wilson Corpus, you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed in Jesus' name. And God's provision will come unto you. The joy of the Lord be upon you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We give you praise and honor forevermore. In Jesus' name. And all the people of God say, Come on, clap your hands. Praise the Lord. Okay, we can all now be seated in the presence of God. Wow, what a beautiful moment of worship. Alam mo ninyo, when the presence of God is being poured out, there is more than words. There is more than praise. There is more than worship. It is His life. It is His all in all when the presence of God is being poured out. Kaya po kapag tayo po ay nagpapatas ng kamay, at pag sinasabi ko pong receive, just open your heart. And let your spirit filled with thanksgiving. Alam mo ninyo, we are in a year of supernatural. This year is our year of supernatural. Supernatural promotion, protection, provision, increase, joy, peace, lahat ng bagay na inahanap ng isang tao. Or we could say, we can experience heaven here on earth. Habang ang mundo po ay pasama ng pasama, habang ang mundo ay padilim ng padilim, padami po ng padami ng mga balitang hindi maganda, sa kaharian naman ng Diyos ay pasaya ng pasaya. Sa kaharian ng Diyos ay ever increasing ang nagaganap hindi kayang ipaliwanag sa kaisipan ng tao. And it will only happen in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God cannot touch by the devil. The Bible says, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Ibig sabihin, wala pong plano ang Diablo na po pwedeng makasira o manaig, managumpay laban sa iglesia ng Diyos, laban sa mga mananampalataya. 
Okay, if we want to be in the safest, safest place, stay in the kingdom of God. If you want a wealthy, a healthy, a beautiful, peaceful life, you can only find and found in the kingdom of God, in the church of God. Kaya kung naghahanap kayo ng isang lugar na makapagpaparefresh o makapagpapagaan dun sa mga kabigatang dinadala mo dito sa mundo, you cannot find it anywhere else. It's only in the presence of God. Just come into the presence of the Lord. Just come into the kingdom of God. Just come in the place where people are praising God. And there, you can receive the real peace, real joy, and real life, nothing more, nothing less. It is a life that is nothing missing, nothing. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Palakpanga mo natin muli ang ating Panginoon. So we are in uh, supernatural promotion, or protection and uh, promotion. This is our uh, message for today. And again, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse uh, 11, this is our verse last uh, Sunday, on our first Sunday. I have observed something else under the sun, sabi po ng pinakamatalino pong tao. Sino po naging pinakamatalinong hari, pinakamatalinong mm, uh, tao? Si Solomon. Ibig sabihin, si Solomon po ay inoobserbahan niya, hindi yung mga kapitbahay niya. Inoobserbahan niya, hindi po yung buhay ng mga tao sa ka-churchmate niya o doon po sa ano man, kundi inoobserbahan niya yung mga pangyayari. Inoobserbahan niya rin yung mga langgam. Inoobserbahan niya mga insekto. Pati butiki, inoobserbahan niya. At doon, nakakuha siya ng idea, nakakuha siya ng karunungan. Now, sabi niya uli dito, I have observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. And the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. Maski yung matatalino, Hindi lahat po ay busog. Minsan, kinakapos. And the skillful are not necessarily wealthy. Hindi lahat ng mga skillful. Minsan ngayon, mga karpintero, eh, sila gumagawa ng magandang bahay, pero wala silang magandang bahay. Siguro yun, na-observahan niya. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. And this is the highlight word of the Lord for us. It is all decided by chance. By being in the right place at the right time. Sabi nga natin, right place at the right time. Meaning, kahit ikaw ang pinakamatulin, pinakamalakas, pinakamatalino, pinaka-skillful, hindi ibig sabihin that you're gonna win and you have a plenty of life or a beautiful life. And sabi dito, it is all decided by chance by being in the light, right place at the right time. Now, yung pong right place at the right time, that is the, the kairos in uh, Greek words and et, eth in Hebrew. Na ibig sabihin po ay it was orchestrated by the Lord. So lahat po ng mga pangyayari, it was orchestrated by God. Ang Diyos po ang nagmamando. Oh, this is powerful and this is beautiful. Kanya lang, hindi po nare-recognize ng iba. Lalong-lalo na mo ngayon, hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon, na yung nangyayari sa kanila ay ang Diyos ang nag-orchestrate. Ang Diyos ang naglagay sa kanila sa posisyon na yan. Now, sa lahat po ng mga taong Kahit gano kakatalino, kay skillful, kahit gano kakalakas, pwedeng mangyari ang masama sa bawat isa. Ito pa ang sabi po dun sa ibang version, sa ERB version. I also saw the other things in the life, in this life that were not fair. The fastest runner does not, does not always win the race. The strongest soldier does not always win the battle. Wise people don't always get the food. 
Smart people don't always get the wealth. Educated people don't always get the praise they deserve. When the time comes, bad things can happen to anyone. So, baliktad naman ito, no? Yung pong right time, right place, the Kairos time, it is a time of God's protection, times of promotion, times of blessing. Pero dito po sa easy to read version, ERV, ay pwedeng mangyari ang hindi maganda sa buhay ng bawat sino man. Kaya hindi ka pwedeng magmalaki sa iyong sariling lakas. Huwag kang manangan sa iyong sariling lakas. Katulad po ng isang pinaka, isa sa pinaka mayaman dun sa aming probinsya noon dahil po sa kanila pong negosyo. Ang negosyo po nila ay transportation. Ang sabi niya nung umunlad na po yung negosyo niya, ang dami na pong bus na bumabiyahe sa norte, maging po hanggang Mindanao, may mga bumibiyahe na rin. Nung meron isang pastor na lumapit sa kanya at ibinahagi ng kailangan niya ang Panginoon, ang sabi po ng tao ay, hindi ko kailangan ng Diyos para umaman. Hindi ko kailangan ng Diyos para umunlad. Maunlad ang negosyo ko. At kahit ang Diyos pa, wala na siyang magagawa para mapigilan ang paglago ng aking kayamanan. That is the word. Alam mo ninyo, huwag mong hamakin ang Diyos at huwag mong kilalanin na yung lakagaling mo ang pinanggalingan ng iyong pag-unlad. In just a twinkling of an eye, nahulog po sa bangin yung isang bus nila doon po sa uh, Baguio. At marami pong namatay. Isa pong namatay doon yung artista na si, ano, yung Tado, yung mahababuho. Alam niyo yun? Oh, isa po yun sa namatay. At syempre, suspindi po ang kanyang mga sasakyan. Sarado lahat kanyang negosyo. Sa loob ng anim hanggang walong buwan. At habang nakasuspindi, lahat ng mga empleyado dapat niyang bayaran. Lahat ng mga inupahang mga lugar kung saan istasyon ng alilang mga bus dapat bayaran. Alam mo ninyo, <laughs> sumadsad ang yaman. Hanggang sa binalikan ng pastor and then he recognized God. Sabi niya, wala pala tayong magagawa. Ayaw mo sabihin na kapag tapos ka, naging general ka, naging senador ka, congressman ka, naging presidente ka. Maski po yung hari na nagmalaki po sa Bible, siya po'y nabuhay na parang hayop, parang kambing, nasiraan ng ulo. Masa nyo yun? Diyan sa Bible. Hindi na ayaw na niyang kumain ng pagkain ng tao, pagkain na doon sa labas, pagkain ng hayop ang kanyang kinakain. Para ipaunawa na Diyos ng iyong posisyon, lakas, kagalingan, ay hindi mo pwedeng ipagmalaki. Sa lahat po ng mga nagiginig po sa atin ng mga unbeliever, no? yung pong mga nagmamalaki sa kanilang posisyon, acknowledge God in your position. Acknowledge God in your wealth, acknowledge God in everything that you have. Lahat ng yan ay binigay ng Panginoon. When the time comes, bad things can happen. One, you never know when hard times will come like fish in a net or birds in a snare, people are often trapped by some disaster that suddenly falls on them. So, pwede pong ang tao ay matrap. Pwede pong mag-fall. Sa panahon na hindi mo inaasahan. Pero this is the good news. Sabihin nga natin, good news. Do you want to hear the good news? Wala ang good news na maririnig po dyan sa mga reporter sa television. The only good news is in the Word of God. And this is the good news. Psalm chapter 91, verse 1, This is God's protection to those people who dwell in the presence of God. This is the good news to those people who believe in God. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. 
walang makakatindig sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Walang kalaban na po pwedeng tumindig laban sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos. And that is your protection, my protection, our protection bilang mga mananampalataya ng Panginoon, we will remain secure and rested. Yan po yung maganda ron eh, no? Kapag secured ka, you are at rest. May kapahingahan. Kaya kapag Ted, yun po mga kapatid po natin na pagod na pagod, magpahinga ka. At huwag mo nang hintayin malagyan ka ng RIP bago mo makamtan ang tunay na kapahingahan. You can experience the rest with peace in the Lord while you are alive here on earth. And that is life that God wants you to be. Yan ang buhay na gusto ng Diyos para sa ating lahat. Enjoy mo lang buhay kay Kristo dito sa lupa. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, enjoy life in Christ to the fullest. Okay, take note ha. So that you can enjoy life, you have to enjoy life in Christ. You cannot enjoy life out Christ. Out Christ, you have no rest. Out Christ, you have no security. Out Christ, you have no protection. But in Christ, He who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High will remain secure and rested in the shadow. Eh sino po ang mga yun? Sila na sumasampalataya kay Kristo sapagat ang sino mang nakipag-isa kay Kristo as He is, so are we. Kung saan nakaupo ang Panginoon, nakaupo tayo kasama ang Panginoon. And we are seated with Christ according to chapter 2 verse 7, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Therefore, proclaim every day, I am secure and I am rested because I am dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. Praise God. In TPT translation, I like this. Dilagay ko po dito sa the Passion Translation. When you abide under the shadow of Shaddai, yung pong ginamit dito ng Most High or Almighty ay ginamit pong Shaddai. So ibig sabihin, inespecify po niya yung pong pangalan, the compound name of God, which is Shaddai. That when you abide under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. Oh, I love that. You are hidden. Ibig sabihin, This is God. You are hidden in the strength of God. You are protected. Kaya po, ang ating malaki na protection po natin ay walang iba kundi ang protection ng Diyos. And the word Shaddai is God of the mountains. Pag sinabi mong God of the mountains, kapag ikaw ay nakatira sa mountains, ibig sabihin, mountains represent a prosperous life, a beautiful life. See, in your mountains, you are, you have to recognize God. In your increase, you have to recognize God. At yan po ang akalan po ng mga kalaban po ng mga Israelita. Minsan, every time na nilalabanan nila ang mga Israelita, doon sa kabundukan, tata, natatalo ang mga kalaban, yung mga Syrian. Sabi nila, bakit kaya lagi tayo natatalo? May nagsuggest doon sa tagapayo ng hari ng Syrian. Sabi niya, ang Diyos kasi nila, God of the mountains, Diyos ng kabundukan. Pero kung lalabanan natin sila doon sa kapatagan, matatalo sila. Kasi ang Diyos nila, Diyos ng kabundukan. Alam po ninyo, ang mga pagano, akala nila ang Diyos po natin ay Diyos ng kabundukan, hindi nila alam. Even in the valleys, He is God. Even in the heavens, He is our God. Even in the mountains, He is our God. And all the days, wherever it is, He is our living God. And valleys is a picture of the low moment of your life. Para bang ang Dios ay wala doon sa valley, kasi yun yung yun yung valley moment mo, yun po yung lowest moment of your life. But no, He is there. The Bible says God is very close to those broken heart people. Sa mga wasak sa mga nalulungkot, sa mga broken heart, God is close to those people. Amen? Sa mga may sakit at karamdaman, God is close to them. Sa mga may hirap, 
Hindi nagpapabayaan Diyos. He is the God of the valley and He is the God of the mountains in your increase, in your prosperity. He is your God. And even in your problems, whatever problem you are facing, He is your God. And He is the God that can provide everything you need. And His name is Shaddai. God, the destroyer of enemies. And po ibig sabihin yan. So ibig sabihin ng protection natin is our God, the destroyer of the enemies. God, the self-sufficient one. Hindi niya kailangan ng katulong, hindi niya kinakailangan ng ibinibigay mo parang sa ganun, mabuhay siya. Hindi natin kailangan, hindi niya kailangan ng anumang bigay natin para mabuhay po siya. Kung bakit tayo nagbibigay, para papurihan siya sapagkat alam natin na lahat ng bagay na meron tayo galing sa Kanya. And we, again, we are using this to proclaim the goodness of the Lord to all people while we are here in this world. He is the self-sufficient one. Ano ito? God, pag sinabing siya die, He is the God, the nurturer of babies. Ibig sabihin po, yung baby hindi nagtatrabaho, hindi po nag-aalala. Nakakita na kayo ng baby na ano, aburido? Yung bang masyadong problemado? Nakakita na kayo ng baby problemado? Yung bang ano, hindi makatulog kasi iniisip niya na walang makain, walang gatas, o walang pera magulang. Meron, na bang, meron bang ganung baby na nakita niya? Wala. Ang baby, kapag nagutom, iiyak lang yan. Sabi niya, gatas, gatas, wah, di ba? Wala siya pakialam. Hindi, hindi, hindi niya alam kung naghihirap bang magulang niya, hindi. Ibig sabihin, ganyan po ang Diyos. He is the nurturer. Ibig sabihin, He is the provider of everyone believing in Him. At katulad po ng baby, mga kapatid, dapat maniwala ka. Hello? And that is a Jedi. And He is God Almighty. Pag sinabi kasing Almighty, walang bagay na mahirap sa Kanya. The word Almighty, and, and, and yan po yung sinasabi, when you abide under the shadow of Shaddai, the one who can provide everything, the one who can do everything, the one nothing is too hard for him to do, then you are secured. You are secured and rested. Kaya kapatid, congratulations. You are going to, 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 to experience supernatural protection from now on until the coming of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you know that you are protected, then be at peace. Ang mga nakakakilala, nakakaunawa, nakakaintindit, naniniwala na ito ang Diyos na pinaglilingkuran nila, inuuna nila ang Diyos sa lahat ng bagay. At sa bawat pagtitipon, nandun sila para purihin sa ambahin ng Diyos at hindi lamang sila pumupunta para sumambat magpuri sa Panginoon. They will invite all their friends, their relatives, and all people in their neighborhood to come into the kingdom of God. They are excited to tell to people kung ano po at sino po ang Diyos na kanilang sinasamba. Kapatid, you cannot invite your, your, your neighbor if you yourself don't go to church. Hindi pa pahalagan ng mga taong paglilingkod kung ikaw mismo na nagsasabing ang Diyos ay mabuti kung hindi ka naman nagsasamasamba sa kanila. Yung pumupunta ka lang pag may time, pumupunta ka lang pag may pangangailangan ka kay Lord, pumupunta ka lang kapag kasi maganda pakiramdam mo, nasa mood ka, pumupunta ka lang kasi nanalo ka ng loto o nanalo ka ng wedding. Yung iba naman, dahil hindi na nanalo, ayaw. Alam mo ninyo, tapos na yung ganong uri ng paglilingkod. Sabi mo sa kaday mo, tapos na yung uri ng ganong uri ng paglilingkod. This is now the time that everyone believing the Lord, recognizing that every good thing is happening to them. And even in their times of valleys, they will worship God. They have the rejoicing heart to praise God. Hallelujah. Ang sabi po Jesus, Psalms 133, verse 6. Oh, 16 actually. And 17, and 18, and 19. Ganda, no? No king is saved by the size of his army. Wow. Kaya huwag mong ipagmamalaki yung army mo. Yung private army mo. Huwag mong ipagmamalaki yung galing mo. Tingnan nyo mo yung mga bansa na akala nila malalakas sila dinigma nila yung maliliit na bansa. Yung mga nangyayari ngayon, tinan mo, nagtiwala sila sa kanilang mga modernong kagamitan sa pakikipagdigma. O, napaatras sila. 
Hello? Tingin nyo nangyayari sa Russia. Akala niya maliit na bansa lang yung ano? Ano ba yun? U- Ukraine? Eh, dami mo na nang palataya ron eh. Okay, atras sila. Huwag kang magtiwala sa lakas mo. Kaya sabi rito, no king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. Hindi ibig sabihin na malakas ka, maka-escape ka dun sa lakas mo. No. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Huwag, ka rin, huwag mo rin ibibilalagay ang tiwala mo dun sa mga horses mo. Kasi nung araw, kapag may horses ka ba, akala mo, lagi kang, lagi kang liyamado sa digmaan. Same thing sa panahon natin. Huwag mong sabihin na mar- malalaking bahay mo, malalaki sa sakyan mo, meron nga mga armored car. Eh, yun ang pag-asa mo. Yun ang security mo. Kapatid, a horse is a vain hope. Sabi nga natin, vain hope. Ano ibig sabihin yung vain hope? Walang kabuluhang pag-asa. For deliverance, despite all its great strength, it cannot save. Ipinapakita po dito mga kapatid, your soldiers, your weapons, your strength cannot save you. But in verse 18, I love it. Nakita niyo yung highlighted? In verse 18, But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him. The word fear Him is reverence Him, worship Him, who put their trust on Him. So kung ang bansang Pilipinas ay nagtitiwala sa Diyos, wala tayong katatakutan because the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him. You worship God. The eyes of the Lord is on those whose hope is in His unfailing love. Ang pag-asa natin ay doon sa hindi kumukupas at hindi bumibigo na pag-ibig ng Diyos. Alam sabi niya, our hope is in the unfailing love of the Lord to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. You have a supernatural protection, my friend. You are protected. Okay, if you know that you are protected, rejoice in the Lord always. Alam niyo, ala ng ibang pinakamasayang pag buhay, kundi yung buhay na nagpupuri sa Diyos. Araw-araw. Don't just come every Sunday to praise God. Make a lifestyle to praise the Lord in your houses. Wherever you are, even in your workplace. Sabagat ang trabaho mo ay bigay din ng Diyos yan. Ang negosyo mo ay bigay din ng Diyos yan. Kinakinakailangan sambahin mo ang Diyos in your workplace, in your businesses, in your promotion, in your increase. Praise God! Hindi yung nagkatrabaho ka, kinalimutan mo lang paglilingkod sa Diyos. Ang gusto mo nang i-please ay yung mga tao sa paligid mo, yung amo mo, upang makamtan mo yung promotion mo, upang makamtan mo yung iyong increase, upang makamtan mo yung promotion sa buhay mo, kapatid, no! Promotion comes from the Lord. Don't please man. Sabagat marami po dyan sumisipsip na iba. Huwag kang sumipsip sa tao. Sumipsip ka sa Diyos. Amen. Trust the Lord. Put your hope in His unfailing love. Maniwala ka na sapat na ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa iyo para makamdan mo ang promosyon mo. Huwag sa tao. Hindi ko mo't ibig sabihin, hindi, ano eh, kinakailangan magpakitang gilas ako sa amo ko, sa, sa superior ko, sa manager ko, sa supervisor ko, sa boss ko para makamdan ko promotion now. Just do your best. Leave who you are. Kasi, the devil is always there, is there trying to put you down. Parang si Joseph. Promotion. Alam niyo kung bakit na-promote si Joseph mula po sa pagkaalipin? Nakapunta po siyang tagapamahala ng lahat ng pag-aari po ni uh, Potiphar. Alam niyo kung bakit? Nakita ni Potiphar ang Diyos sa buhay ni Joseph. 
pag makita ng mga unbeliever ang Diyos sa buhay mo, kapatid. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, the patience, the love, that even in your smile, nakikita nila ang Diyos, grabe kahit ayaw na kanilang ipromote, kahit sa 2027 pa nila ikaw ipromote, gusto nila sa February, promoted ka na. That is the way of God. Don't go to the ways of man. Mapapagod ka. At saka sasama ang loob mo kung ginawa mo ang lahat pagkatapos ang na-promote yung pong alam mong katabi mo, karipal mo pa. Talaga. Alam mong mas magandang performance mo doon? Ikaw yung laging gumagawa ng uh, pasipsip sa ako pagkatapos ibang prinomot, sasama ang loob mo. Magiging bitter ka. Imbes na maging better ang buhay mo, maging bitter ka. Why? Inahanap mo ang promotion sa tao. Don't look and don't find promotion from men. Look unto God. Put your hope to the unfailing love of the Lord. Because the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him. Who put His trust on Him. To deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. Alam niyo, ito po yung ganda nito sa Romans 9.13. Sabi ni Lord, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. Dati hindi ko maintindihan ito eh. Bakit ganun si Lord? Meron siyang minamahal, meron siyang kinasusuklaman. Jacob I love, Esau I hated. Eh, paano kung ikaw si Esau? May Esau ka na lang. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Mabigat to. Kahabagan ko ang gusto kong kahabagan. Kaawaan ko ang gusto kong kaawaan. Eh, paano pag hindi ka kinawaan ng Diyos? But this, 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 this is our security. In verse 16, pinaliwanag ni Pablo, It does not therefore depend on human desire or effort. So ibig sabihin, ang promotion ay hindi nakadepende sa human effort. Nung sinabi ni Lord na, I will have mercy to those I want to grant mercy, I have compassion to those I have grant compassion. Hindi ibig sabihin na merong itinatangi ang Diyos, kundi gustong ipakita na ang dependency mo ay dapat hindi sa lakas mo, hindi sa talino mo, hindi sa galing mo, hindi sa negosyo mo, hindi sa trabaho mo, kundi sa Kanya. To Him. That is the meaning. So, it does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. Alalang po ninyo, sino po yung mga kinakabagan ng Diyos? Kinahabagan ng Panginoon? Mercy here means compassionate by divine grace. Meaning, ang kinakahabagan ng Diyos, kinakaawaan ng Panginoon, ay yung pong mga nabubuhay sa Kanyang bihay. Ang ibig sabihin nito is, those people who depend not on their strength, who depend not their own intellect and wisdom, but those people who depend on God, the Lord will grant to them mercy, grace, and favor. Glory to God. Hallelujah! So you will get the mercy of God if you're going to depend on Him. Kaya nga tayo dito, actually this, this group, we are just a small group, but we depend on God. And because we depend on God, this year is our year of supernatural promotion, increased favor in our lives. Oh, I tell you, there's something great, something good that God will going to take place even to everyone coming in here and everyone listening online. I prophesy in the name of 
Jesus. Increase, promotion, favor, healing, restoration of family, good family will be upon you this year. You shall reap abundantly, prosperously, more than you can imagine in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. So, you have to depend on God's grace and be led to right happenings. Last Sunday, yung right happenings is a time of refreshing. And time of refreshing is a time where the Holy Spirit is moving. And you know what? In this new covenant, the Lord, His Spirit, it's not just moving, but He is dwelling in you. Because this is a time of refreshing. And the time of refreshing is the time of Kairos moment. And it will happen. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Ang siyang maglilid sa iyo sa tamang buhay at ikokonek ka sa mga tamang tao. We call that divine connection. At yan po ang iyong promotion. Alam nyo, ang daming kaparaanan ng Panginoon. Maybe you are looking for your situation that it seems like no more hope for you to, you know, be restored, para ikaw ay umunlad, parang wala ng pag-asa. Kapatid, don't look on your situation, don't look on your kakayahan, don't look on your educational attainment, don't look on your neighborhood or even to your relatives na parang wala ka namang relatives na pwedeng gamitin ng Panginoon. Believe on Him. He can do something great. Alam niyo ba ang expertise ng Diyos? Ang expertise ng Diyos ay yung hindi kaya ng tao, kaya niyang gawin. Ang expertise ng Diyos ay yung imposible tao, sa tao, posible sa Kanya. Yan ang expertise ng Diyos. Kasi kapag kaya mong gawin, hindi mo pa maibibigay sa Kanya yung buong mong tiwala. Eh. Kasi kaya mong gawin. Eh. Pero kapatid, oh, trust Him. Gusto ko mong ipakita sa inyo before we close. Ang buhay po ni Ruth. Si Ruth po, in the book of Ruth, kung mababasa nyo, basahin nyo kung hindi nyo pa nababasa. Si Ruth ay isang muwabita. Pag sinabing muwabita, hindi ka kabahagi ng Israel. You have no bloodline of Israel. Ang tawag sa'yo ay Gentile. Ang Gentile ay mga itinuturing na marumi. Walang karapatan sa pagpapala ng Diyos. Warang karapatan sa covering ng Panginoon. That is the Gentile. And you know what? We are Gentile. Pero, si Ruth, nung namatay yung asawa niya na Israelita, at namatay din yung biyanan niyang lalaki, ay nabuhay na lang ay yung kanyang biyanang babae na si Naomi. Wala na silang hanap buhay. Ibig sabihin, kasi in the old, kapag ikaw po ay balo, Nagihirap ka kasi doon talagang ang nagtatrabaho lang lalaki. Ang mga babae talaga ay ano yan, inaalagaan, pinapaganda. Yan, ganyan po talaga. Wala, wala talagang ibang, ang, ang, every time na uuwi po yung ano, yung lalaki may dalang serum, may dalang, may dalang oil, para lang sa ganun, magnesium, di ba? May dalang mga, lahat na mga pampasiksi, pampaganda. Inaalagaan yan. Kaya kayong mga lalaki, now you know. Marami pa kaming stock dyan. Amen. <laughs> now, namatay po yung asawa niya. Ay di wala na ngayon. Nagirap. Right? Sa kahirapan po ay babalik na si no, Naomi doon po sa Israel. Sa kanyang pagbabalik, sabi niya sa kanyang mga manugang, huwag na kayong sumama sa akin. Wala na kayong maasahan sa akin. Maghihirap lang kayo. Mga bata pa kayo, magkapag-asawa pa kayo ng mga mayayaman. Makipag-chat kayo sa mga mayayaman dyan. Marami pa kayong makikitang iba. Alam niyo si Naomi, ang ganda ng sinabi niya, hindi kita pwedeng iwanan. Kung nasaan ka, nandodon ako. Kung anong lupain mo, lupain ko. At itong sinabi niya, kung sino ang Diyos mo, siya rin ang Diyos ko. Ibig sabihin, si, Nao, eh, si, si Ruth, tinanggap niya yung Diyos ng Israel. He believes in the God of Israel. 
Kapatid, if you believe in the God of Israel, if you believe in Christ, if you accepted Christ, your life will never be the same again. The moment that Ruth proclaimed, declare, he believes in the God of Israel, ibig sabihin, nagbago ang buhay niya. Maring wala pa siyang nakita na pagbabago. Maring madilim pa, mahirap pa rin. Kasi pagdating po nila sa Israel, wala silang mapagsimulan na negosyo, wala pala silang mapagsimulan na kabuhayan. Pero naniniwala si Ruth na siya ay pagpapalain ng Diyos. Kapatid, nung tinanggap mo ang Panginoon si Christ, maaring madilim pa rin ang buhay mo. Pero the moment you receive Christ, that is the new day of your life. That is the new beginning of your life. Anong araw ba? O nang oras, anong oras ba nagsisimula ang araw? Panahon ba na alas 6 para maliwanag na? Ano ba ang oras nagsisimula ang araw? 12 midnight, right? 12 midnight, 12.01 is a new day. It's a new day but still part in the surroundings. Pero kapatid, pagdating ng 12 midnight, bago na. Ibig sabihin, bago ng buhay, bago ng pag-asa, maring wala ka bang makitang liwanag. Parang wala ka bang makitang pagbabago, but it's a new day. Alam niyo ba nang dumating po ang liwanag when the Lord commanded light into this world? Anong sabi ng Panginoon? What is the first word of God in the creation in the book of Genesis? Let there be light. And according to book of John, that light is the life of men. Yan po yung nagbigay ng buhay sa sangkatauan at lahat ng may buhay ay nanggaling sa liwanag na yan. Kaya ang sabi ng Panginoon, I am the light of the world. When the Lord says, I am the light of the world, darkness pa rin po ang nakikita sa mundo. Wala pang liwanag sapagkat wala pang bituin, wala pang buwan, wala pang araw. Dilim pa rin ang, 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 ang nakabalot sa mundo. Pero nung ang sinabi ng Panginoon, let there be light. When the light comes into this world, then ang mundo na gulo, ang mundo na walang, uh, walang buhay, ay nagkaroon na ng buhay. Nung tinanggap mo ang Panginoong Iso Kristo sa buhay mo, kapatid, maaaring madilim pa rin ang paligid mo. Makikita mo madilim pa rin, pero bagong buhay na. Meron ka ng liwanag. You have a new hope. You have a life. You have the promotion. Arise, shine, for your light has come. That's what the Bible says. Ganyan po ang buhay ni Ruth. Nung tinanggap niya ang Diyos ng mga Israelita, anong sabi rito, And Ruth the Moabites said to Naomi, Let me now go to the field. Ang kanya pong ginagawa. Naniniwala siya na kahit sa kahirapan ng kanilang buhay, ay merong gagawin ng Diyos sa kanilang buhay. Kapatid, paniwalaan mo, merong gagawin ng Diyos para sa promotion mo! Ito ang sabi niya, oh, let me now go to the field. Ibig sabihin kapag nasa biyaya ka kapatid, glory to God, hindi ibig sabihin na wala kang ginagawa, lalo kang mas masipag at lahat ng ginagawa mo, promotion mo, pag-ahente mo, paglalako mo, o ano bang negosyo, meron ka kahit na maliit na bagay lamang yan. Expect the promotion of God, expect the grace of God, expect the favor of God. Huwag kang magtiwala sa sipag mo. Huwag kang magtiwala sa kakayahan mo, talino mo, galing mo. Huwag kang magtiwala sa karanasan mo. Magtiwala ka sa pabor ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Ang sabi niya, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in his sight. Sabi niya, I shall find grace. Grabe. Nung sinabi po ni, ni Ruth, sa aking pagpamumulot ng mga grain, I shall find grace. Sabihin mo, pag lumalabas ka sa aking pagtatrabaho, I have the favor, I have the grace of God. Sa aking pagninegosyo, I have the favor, I have the grace of God. Sa aking pagkikipagtransak sa aking mga kliyente, I have the favor, I have the grace of God. Look on the grace of God. At ang sabi niya rito, no, ang sabi ni Naomi nung sinabi ni Ruth na I shall find grace. Ang sabi naman ni Naomi, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field 
after the reapers. And you know what? And her hop was to light an, a part of the field belonging unto Boaz. Napapunta po siya doon po sa field ng nagngangalang Boaz. Alam po ninyo, yung pong hop doon, ang ibig sabihin, that is the English, old English term po ng happy. Which is kara. Ang kara ay noun at ang light ay kara din ang ibig sabihin pero verb. So, ibig sabihin noun and verb. Noun is a person, a place, or things. Tama? Pag sinabi natin verb is an action. Hallelujah. Ibig sabihin merong kilos, may paggawa. Right happening. Ibig sabihin ng kara, parehas na kara. At ang ibig sabihin ng kara ay right happenings. So you have to expect that when you do something, there's a right happenings. There is the blessing of the Lord. Hello, pumunta po siya. Punong puno ng pagtitiwala na kanyang gagawin ay masusumpuan niya ang pabor ng Dios. Alam po niyo itong nagihirap sa nasirot, balo. Pagtitingnan mo walang kinabukasan, casted out. Actually. According to uh, the Levitical law in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 25, ano? if someone is in trouble, a relative can redeem them if they are willing and able to pay for their redemption. So, ibig sabihin, uh, para sila po ay maihango sa kahirapan ang isang balo, dapat meron pong kamag-anak na willing and able na magbabayad ng presyo para sila po ay matubos at kukunin kanya yung uh, iriridim niya na kamag-anak na mahirap. Ang tawag po doon is kinsman redeemer. There should be a kinsman redeemer. Alam niyo, the love story of Ruth and Boaz, kasi pagbabasahin po ninyo yung Ruth, book of Ruth, <laughs> ay nagkatuluyan si Boaz at saka si Ruth. So, ibig sabihin, hindi po ito aksidente. Kasi, nung lumabas si Ruth, ang sabi niya, I shall find the grace of God. Naniniwala siya sa pabor ng Diyos. So, this is not an accident, but the word kara, right happening, is, it is a happening that is orchestrated by God. Kaya wag, wag ko yung, ay, aksidenta lang na. Wag. It was orchestrated by God. Ang isang pastor na kausap ko ng isang araw, naging, nagkaroon siya ng multimillion na pera. Sabi ko, paano nga nagkaroon ng multimillion na pera? Meron daw nagpinansa kanya na isang negosyanteng inchik. Sabi ko, paano mo naman, paano ka naman nakakonek doon sa negosyanteng inchik? Ang sabi niya ay, namumulot ako o nagbibili ako ng kalakal. Yung bote, bakal, plastic, namimili siya. Tapos, ibinebenta niya doon sa inchik na nagbibili ng mga kalakal. Mer parang meron ganun dito sa atin dati. Eh, no? So, ganun ang ginagawa niya. And yet, pastor. Kaya lang, I shall find the grace of God in I'm, what I'm doing. Yun po yung kanyang paniniwala. Alam niyo ba na, no? Nakita nung inchik, no? Na, ang daming dinadala nung pastor. At, dahil madami siyang dinadala, marami siyang bibilin, kaya lang wala siyang kapital. Humihiram siya ngayon. At sabi niya, five days if you babalik ko. Two days pa lang, binabalik na niya. Kinakailangan, tapat ka. Hello? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, dapat ibalik mo tapat ka. <clears throat> oh. Kabag merong ang hiniram, ibalik mo. Di ba? O yan. Binalik niya. Yung sinabi niyang five days, two days pa lang, three days pa lang, binabalik na niya. Kaya kapag nagsabi ulit, wala pong ano, hesitance na binibigyan ulit nung hanggang sa nakita niya ang sipag nito at tapat. Yan ang kailangan ko. And you know what? Inoperan niya yung pastor. 
inopera niya ng bibigyan kita ng machine. Uwi ka sa inyo, bilhin mo lahat ng kalakal, ikakras mo doon sa machine, at kapag ka na-square-square na nakras ng ganun, dadali mo sa akin akong bibili. Oh, di ibig sabihin, naging multimillionaire siya. Hello? Yun po yung tinatawag na kara or right happening. It is the favor of God. Yung pong kairos, kara, amen? Yung, yung, yung pong yung favor ng Lord, it will direct you to a right connection or right people. Meron kang makikilala. Na aksi, hindi po aksidente, kundi ang tawag doon ay orchestrated by the Lord. Kaya, kapatid, yung ginagawa mo, huwag kang magtiwala doon sa ginagawa mo lang. Ask and believe for the favor of God in your life. And I tell you, it shall come to pass in your life. It will take place. It will happen to you. Kasi kung ang aasahan mo lang ay yung galing mo sa ginagawa mo, sampung taon mo nang ginagawa yan, tapos parang walang increase, kapatid, magtiwala ka na sa Diyos. Amen? At ganyan ang gagawin ng Diyos sa atin dito sa ever-increasing grace. Hindi po aksidente na ever-increasing grace ang pangalan ng grupo natin because we gonna experience an ever-increasing favor, promotion of the Lord. Ever increasing health, ever increasing life of you know plenty. Glory to God. At si Jesus po ang naging kinsman redeemer. Si 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 Boaz po yung love story nila ay picture na yung pagiging kinsman redeemer ng panginoon sa atin. So God wants us to believe Him and pray for kara. Ano uli ang kara? Right happening this year. Hello. This year. Actually, yung kara po sa akin, if I gonna evaluate my life, it was happened way back 2016 or 2014, something. Uh, 20, 2014. Yung kara po sa buhay ko. Kasi naituro minsan to ni Sister Cell, yung one boas is enough for you to have your breakthrough. Nung naituro niya to, sabi ko, Lord, Boas. Kasi si Boas po ang nagbigay ng ginamit ng Lord para na breakthrough ang bu- buhay ni, ni Ruth. At alam niyo ba si Ruth? Naging anak po nila si Jesse. At si Jesse, anak niya si David. At si David, hari ng Israel. At si David, angkan, pinagmulan ng Panginoong Yesus. Grabe. Mula sa, mula sa wala. Balo. Wala nang may lagay na sirum sa mukha. Wala nang may lagay na magnesium. <laughs> wala nang. Pero tinan mo, nagkaroon ng buhay. At naging bahagi pa siya ng bloodline ng Panginoong Yesus. Amen? Saan nagsimula? I believe in the favor of God. I shall find the grace of God. The glory to the name of the Lord. Kaya sabi mo palagi, makakamtan ko, masusumpungan ko, ang pabor ng Diyos sa buhay ko. Glory to God. At ang sabi niya, this year, sabi po sa verse 12 ng Genesis 24, ito po namang Genesis 24, ito naman po yung alipin ni Abraham. And this is, the, I, I believe this is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, the picture of the Holy Spirit. Ang sabi doon sa kanyang alipin, pumunta ka at ipaghanap mo ng mapapangasawa ang anak kong si Isaac. Hindi po na-mention ang pangalan nito kasi that is the Holy Spirit. Actually, the Holy Spirit, yung pinakamatindi ang role sa buhay natin pero minsan hindi siya nababangkit. Kasi ang gusto niya lang maitaas ay ang kanyang Panginoon. Ang gusto niya may taas ay ang Panginoong Yesus. Ito pong alipin na ito, bago po siya umalis, nagpray siya. At ang prayer niya ay ganito, O Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success. Ano uli yung success doon? Kara. Right happening. So yun po yung prayer natin. Hello? We're gonna pray for kara. We are pray for 
right happening and now is the day. Now is the year. Ang sabi niya, please give me success this day and show kindness. Yung pong kindness dun is hesed. Yung pong word hesed in English is grace. Hello? Favor! Grace! The works of God! Sabi niya, show kindness to my master Abraham. Mga kapatid, pray for God's favor. For kara and hesed. Meaning, the right happening and the favor of God in your life. Believe it. Every day of your life, lagi mong sasabihin, Panginoon, salamat for my kara and for the hesed. Uh, this is my Kairos year. This is my right time, right happening in my life and even to our church, our ever-increasing grace group, Lord. And we're going to praise your name forevermore. Hallelujah. We're going to declare that you are God. Our friend, when we pray for success, it speaks of our dependence on God for success. Ang dependence po natin ay sa Diyos. If we do not pray for the Lord for success, we end up relying on our self-effort. Someone else. Okay? We're gonna, we gonna rely on someone else or even new age teachings to experience success in our lives. Mga kapatid, let's learn to trust the grace of God. Katulad ni Ruth at katulad nung panalangin nung alipin ni Abraham. At sila po'y nakasumpong. Yung alipin ni Abraham, eksakto nung siya po'y nagpahinga. Yung pong babaeng dumating, yun ang nasumpungan niya na mapangasapa ni Isaac. Bakit? Siya po ay nanalangin. This is our year, everyone. This is our kara. And God will show, has said, His kindness to every one of you. And I declare in the name of Jesus, prosperity. I declare health, long life, healing, increase, promotion to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say, Amen.